Hello photo enthusiasts. This is a review of the size Loxiar 85mm f2.4. As all Loxias, this lens is very well built in an all metal body that will last your lifetime. However, it is not too hefty but rather elegant. All Loxias have got a 52mm filter diameter, which is very useful if you are using several lenses from this line and if you are doing some filter photography. You just need one filter and you can screw it on and off on all of your lenses. It's uh, a rather tiny lens, uh, given the focal length, which is making perfectly sense because size is like the strongest argument for the mirrorless system, right? comes with a metal lens hood, screws on like this. Then uh, you get the rather cigar-like shape. And I'm telling you this in total seriousness. If you screw it onto your Sony and you're uh, wearing your Sony with a neck strap so that it's hanging down on your belly, it's almost impossible for the viewer who's beholding you not to get a Freudian association. So if you want to level up your pickup game, then this is also a nice uh, rig receipt for your game. You know, let me take it off again. So um, it's a manual focus lens. The manual focus is very smooth. It has no play at all. It's uh, very nice. Here you have got the aperture ring. Um, if you want, you can uh, use uh, this screw here, and then uh, you can you can uh, put it into clickless mode, which is like very useful if you want to do videography. Unfortunately, as you can see, turning the focus ring here, it's almost the whole lens which is like moving. Then you are having the aperture ring here, and because like all the lens is like composed of moving parts it's making it very difficult to screw it on and uh, on or off uh, your camera right what you have to do if you want to screw it on you put your aperture to f22 then you can get a firm grip like this you can screw it on and when you want to screw it off you put it to f 2.4 and you do like that it's a workaround um, it's okay, you know, I'm not uh, changing the lenses all day long, so I can do like this. But, you know, I just wished Sony had solved this problem differently, because this is actually the on only minus I would give to this otherwise perfect lens. So, um, it's an all manual focus lens. Um, as I know, some of you would, um, they, they like um, automatic focus. But for me, you know, um, manually focusing is joyful because I do photography as a hobby. And so I want to have the pure experience of, of uh, photography, right? If I'm put, I mean, I could put the camera in automatic mode and put in the automatic autofocus, uh, even the uh, eye autofocus, and then like um, put the raw file into Lightroom, use a preset. And you know, it's I wouldn't do much. And uh, it, for me, it would spoil uh, the fun in photography. So I like manual focusing and actually, with uh, the Sony Alpha series, uh, manually focusing is joyful and it's very easy because you have got these focus aids. You have got the focus peaking. For me, the pe focus peaking is not so useful because my eyes are still good enough to decide for myself when something is sharp and in focus or when it's not in focus. Maybe in 20 years I will change my decision about this. But you have also got the focus magnification, which is very useful. Um, you can put uh, your camera into autofocus magnification. Uh, many people like this a lot. For me, it's not so nice because it's slowing down my um, focusing workflow. 
but it's um, very useful and first of all when you are beginning with um, with automatic focus uh, with, with uh, manual focusing so let me tell you you have to get used a little bit to the manual focusing at first if you are not experienced with it but with a little training you become uh, very fast with it and when this lens came out, many were disappointed by the slowness of the maximum aperture. Yet every lens design is a trade-off. The f2.4 on an 85mm actually are enough to give you a lot of blur and to even render one eye as unsharp if the model is not looking directly into the camera. Maybe this rather slow maximum aperture even makes it more easy for some photographers not to waste too many shots due to unsharpness. The quality of the book is very nice. It's soft and feminine, which is typical for the Sonar design. Sonar lenses, by the way, are not produced for the DSLR because the rear element would get into the way of the mirror. We see them only in rangefinders and now in mirrorless cameras. When it comes to sharpness, this lens just performs over the top. I mean, the resolution is just ridiculous already at f2.4 and across the frame. I mean, look at this. This uh, has been shot at f2.4 and you can see like every little artery in the eye, right? You can see every hair and look at the fall off here and how thin the depth of field at f2.4 actually is. And actually this uh, amazing resolution power gives you some options. Um, typically what we want to do in a portrait is we want to enhance the eyes, right? And what we used to do is often we use a high pass filter and then we brighten the eyes a little bit up and afterwards it's looking ridiculous, right? So what we can do if we have um, so much resolving power is what we can do is uh, when we're having the iris there is a pattern formed um, by the pigmented cells, right? And what we can do is like just at the bright areas, we can paint in a little bit more brightness, right? And also here at the eye highlights and um, like the perceived uh, sharpness of the image will increase due to uh, the contrast we're adding in here. And we are also brightening the whole iris up and uh, it will have a very natural look afterwards. Let me just give you some quick real life examples I was getting from shootings with this lens. You see the nice micro contrast here in this shot or here and you see the nice tonality. It's, it's just wonderful. Um, let me give you another example here where you have this wonderful soft uh, and delicate transition from bright to dark areas or here with a more contrasty photo. I've heard people claiming already that uh, the Loxia 85mm would render colors in a muted way. Um, others have uh, claimed uh, this lens would uh, render rather punchy colors. Well, in my view it definitely doesn't render with punchy colors, but what I would say, the colors look very neutral, but the skin colors are rendered in a very amazing way. They are looking so nice coming from this lens. And in this shot here, uh, I did some po post-processing on this shot, but I didn't touch the colors at all. However, I know that uh, producing this video, like the video software will change the colors a lot. So um, I will uh, load the original files and put the link to the files down uh, the video. What is however the problem like um, when you want to show colors is like every viewing device is rendering colors in a different way. I have uh, produced um, these photos on a Dell monitor and even like, you know, um, even calibrating the monitor doesn't help with these issues, you know, it, a calibrated monitor will help you to get like better prints, but since every viewing device is rendering the colors so differently, 
um, like what I can say that uh, I've got a Samsung phone and uh, like on both both my phone and the laptop uh, they, they're looking very nice so I hope I could help you with your buying decision um, let me tell this again this lens is super amazing um, the only issues I've having is like with difficulty uh, screwing this lens on and off on the camera otherwise it's like uh, just over the top in in every regard thanks for watching and uh, leave your comment bye bye